Emilio Pagan comes in with a three-run lead, puts the Twins into trouble. They can't get out of it. They lose to Cleveland again on a walk-off. Lot to talk about on today's episode of Locked On Twins. You are Locked On Twins. Your daily Minnesota Twins podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. And welcome to the Lockdown Minnesota Twins podcast. Today is Wednesday, June 29th, and I'm your gracious gracious host, Nash Walker. Today's episode is brought to you by Sports Card Investor. Hey, Twins fans, you're going to love this Sports Card Investor app. Welcome to the world of trading cards reimagined. Stay tuned later in the show for more information on this awesome new tool for collectors. You're going to want to check out the Sports Card Investor app. Again, this is Nash Walker, season three hosting a daily podcast on the Minnesota Twins, season four, writing about the Twins at twinsdaily.com. And for the fourth time in uh, a week, a week plus, Emilio Pagan basically blew a game for the Twins. And Jarrell Cotton gave up the the home run to Josh Naylor that finished this game on not a good pitch, uh, two-strike pitch, fastball, pretty much center cut. Naylor took it to left field. Good piece of hitting from Josh Naylor, but that pitch needed to be up. He got him swinging up on that fastball a couple times, needed to be up. It wasn't, and Cotton's given up a bunch of home runs. Cotton's part of a a bullpen that just sucks outside of Yonderon. And I want to start here with how this game was managed up until they got to Pagan. I thought, hear me out, I will get to the Pagan decision. The moves leading up to Emilio Pagan, taking out Bundy after five, going to Theobar, Yuandron for two, even though the game was tied. They they went to Yuandron. They used Yuandron, and he pitches two scoreless innings to keep the Twins in that game. They played in a tie game. That's not a decision he usually makes, and the Twins usually make. They usually are going to their lower leverage relievers, and then if they get the lead, they go to Duran. That's unlike them to go to Duran for two innings of a tie game on the road, and they did it. I thought it was a great decision, and this game was really well managed, and clearly it was because they the Twins had a 6-3 to three lead going into the bottom of the 10th inning and a a very well-managed game came down to one decision in the 10th inning. And for whatever reason, I know why, I think I know why Rocco Baldelli went back to Emilio Pagan with uh, a runner on second, the ghost runner or the Manfred runner on second. And uh, the twins with a three run lead after Max Kepler hit a big home run. Carlos Correa drove in a run more twins moments ruined by Emilio Pagan. I'm going to talk more about Pagan today and just him and what to do with him. But let's talk about this decision first. I know what it is. You want to get him right back on the mound and get him to flush that, to flush what's happened, flush the blown saves, flush the the disasters. Here's the thing. Emilio Pagan isn't good. So him flushing, he's not reverting back to anything. And I saw Baldelli said in his post game today, like we were talking about Emilio Pagan was a very good reliever, you know, for Tampa Bay. It's true. He was. And honestly, his stuff, he has good stuff. He has no command. And he he gives up a billion homers. He's not good anymore. And I think going to him there is indefensible to me. And I know there aren't a lot of options in this bullpen. I know it's a rock and a hard place. But anybody but Pagan in that spot. Because what's the upside there for you? I don't think you trust Emilio Pagan down the stretch this year. Why in the world would a first-place team trust Emilio Pagan right now at all? Why would you trust this guy? You're not going to trust him in the second half. No chance are you going to feel good going to Emilio Pagan in a playoff game. So what are you trying to build him back to? Like the upside is, oh, he has a good outing, and he parlays that into a couple more good outings, and then eventually he's going to explode again because that's what he does. So the upside here is non-existent. You have no upside. And the downside is so low. It's like when Rocco pull, it very much is like Rocco pulling you under on and going to Caleb Thielbar against Stephen Kwan in that Sunday finale against Cleveland last week. What the upside is what? I guess what happened? He gets the outs. The downside is you are lambasted for that decision. It looks horrible. It is horrible. And that's what happened tonight. The downside played out, which is Pagan gets knocked around. He made a pitch to Stephen Qua. Dude, throw strikes. Like, make them beat you. You have a three-run lead, and he walks Quan. And I know that pitch was borderline, could have been called the strike. 
just throw the ball in the zone. Like, don't get to a full count. Throw the ball in the zone. You have a three-run lead. You have an out. Don't even worry about the runner. Throw the ball in the zone. Stop walking, guys. It's so annoying. And as soon as you walk him, there's this rally. And then he gives up, of course, the double to Ahmed Rosario. Gets inside fastball. And Rosario rips it down the line. This is not to take anything away from the Guardians. I thought they put it together, and they didn't give up. They could have easily given up when Max Kepler hit that home run to go up 6-3. to three. They didn't give up. So credit to them. But to go to Pagan there is is a mistake. It was a mistake in the moment. It's an even bigger mistake now. And hindsight bias, you know, in the moment, I try to think of how I felt in that moment. Nobody feels good with him coming to the game. I try to, I always try to be rational. And I'll talk more about Rocco today. In four years now, I've seen him. I've been closely watching him for four years. I always try to think of rationally in that moment how I felt. And in that moment, I was like, okay, the Twins have a three-run lead. But I didn't, I didn't see the logic in it. I just didn't. And there are many decisions Rocco Bodelli's made that a lot of people don't like. And a lot of people say that was dumb. Why is he doing that? I can see the logic in it. And I, I work to find that logic sometimes. Sometimes it's harder than others. Other times it's not. And it's very obvious to me. I couldn't find the logic in this decision tonight. I, I just didn't understand it. And the only explanation I have is we don't want to go to Jarrell Cotton. Or we don't want to go to Tyler Thornburg. We don't want to go to Tyler Duffy. It's so easy to say now, but any of those guys is better than going to Pagan right there after what he's done the last week. I mean, anybody else but Emilio Pagan, and they went to Pagan, and he got too cute. I think he saw it as an opportunity and said this is a chance to get him back on track, and it absolutely exploded, exploded in their faces. And it's not just Baldelli. It's Wes Johnson, and it's the Twins. You know, they exploded in their face. Uh, bad decision. Let's talk about Pagan, like what to do with Emilio Pagan. Now, I talked about it a little bit last night. Let's do it again after this word from Sports Card Investor. I told you about Sports Card Investor. They're sponsoring this episode. Welcome to the world of sports cards reimagined. The Sports Card Investor app is the hobby's most powerful resource. Quickly check the value of your favorite cards, find great deals, and profit from the hobby you love. Available completely free in the Google Play and Apple app stores. The Sports Card Investor app is a must have for baseball fans. It's completely free. You can easily browse over 630,000 cards from every sport with hundreds more added each week. Check the latest values of your favorite cards with seven-day or 30-day charts and find the best prices and buy directly through the app with our eBay deals feature. Download the Sports Card Investor app today, available for free in the Google Play and Apple app stores, or go to sportscardinvestor.com slash locked on. Last night, this is so funny. I talked about this last night because Pagan blew a game yesterday too, folks. He blew a game yesterday. So I talked about this last night. It's the beauty of a five-day-a-week podcast, right? I talked about this last night. I said, we're done. Fool me once, shame on me. Fool me two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine times, shame on me. Or shame on you. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me multiple times, shame on me for believing in you again. It was so obvious to me yesterday, and it was so clear that Emilio Pagan has fooled Rocco Baldelli enough times now where it's it's on Rocco the next time. I made a vow last night. I made a vow. If Emilio Pagan blows a game late again for the Twins, again, period, and I know it's only June, again, period, if he blows a game again for the Twins, it is Rocco Baldelli's fault. And I made a, a vow to that. This is Baldelli's fault because this guy has shown you over and over again that he can't get it done. I said this last night. This is, I said it, I said it 24 hours ago and look what happened again. Pagan blows a game. I don't care that it was six to three. He blew a game late. And I know the, the runs are, you know, cotton gave up the home run. That's Pagan's job to get those outs right there. And he had to be pulled from this game with two runners in scoring position, had to be pulled out of this game with the tying run on second base. If Pagan does it again, it's on Rocco. It's on Rocco tonight. I have supported Rocco Baldelli in his four years as Twins manager. A lot of people don't like him. A lot of people think he's managing off, you know, a computer. A lot of people think he is a puppet for the front office. And, you know, a majority of Rocco Baldelli's decisions, again, I can see logic in them. And I am more new school. Like, I'm a new school mind. I, I think forwardly about baseball. And if you don't, that's fine. I like that this podcast is for everybody. I totally, you know, respect more of an old school mindset. But I think I like that this front office 
is forward thinking. And I like that Rocco Baldelli is forward thinking. So I have supported a lot of things he's done. Like I don't get very worked up about him pulling starters after four or five innings. And, you know, I, sometimes I think it's the wrong decision, but I don't get worked up over. It doesn't bother me, you know, as much as it bothers some other people. So I've supported him in, in many decisions where people have thought it was a poor decision. Tonight is just a poor decision period, like a very poor decision. And I, in the moment didn't support it after I'm even more irked by it. It's such a it's such a bad mistake, man. Like Aaron Gleeman tweeted this tonight. The Twins could have a 10 game lead on Cleveland if they just closed these games out. If they would have won yesterday, if they would have closed this game out tonight, you had a three run lead. They were up 10 to seven at Target Field in the ninth inning and blew it. They were up, you know, they took a lead. Luis Arise had a big home run. They took a lead in game one of that series and blew it on a Framio Reyes two run homer. If they would have closed out these games, they'd have a 10 game lead on Cleveland. It's incredible. That's incredible. It's two games. And you know how many games they'd be up on Chicago who lost three out of four to the Orioles and also lost two out of three to the Angels. They'd be up, I think, eight or nine games on the White Sox. I don't have the numbers in front of me, but they'd be up big on the White Sox too. You'd be, be able to bury them. The White Sox, stop letting the White Sox hang around. And like for Cleveland, I said it last night, I think this is a, a good ball club. Like I think this is a good team, a round 500 team. I think the Twins have a better team. You know, but the bullpen is so bad and so weak that it outshines the the best parts of the Twins, which is their offense is is awesome. Like this offense is so awesome with Alex Kirilov. What a night for Alex Kirilov, and what a return for Alex Kirilov. Carlos Correa comes through. Max Kepler gets on the board with a huge home run. This offense is great. Gio Urshela hits a home run. They battle. They fight. They have power. They can hit to all fields. It's the most well-rounded offense the Twins have had in years, and it hasn't mattered in so many of these games because their bullpen sucks outside of one rookie. Imagine where they'd be without you on Duran. I don't even want to think about that. Let's talk about Emilio Pagan, what to do with him after these words from Blue Nile and Rock Auto. Are you looking for fine jewelry, but you're having trouble choosing? Blue Nile has jewelry experts on hand 24-7, available via phone or chat to help you find a memorable gift at every budget, Blue Nile has simple online tools that let you choose the diamond shape, size, and clarity, as well as setting style. Blue Nile's bench jewelers will then handcraft her perfect engagement ring. Each ring is one of a kind. Make your moment sparkle with jewelry from BlueNile.com and Lockdown Sports, Lockdown Twins listeners. Get $50 off purchases of $500 or more. This podcast exclusive includes engagement. Use code LOCKDOWN. That's code LOCKDOWN. Plus, Every order is insured, ships free, and arrives in discreet packaging that won't give away what's inside. Shop stress-free and find your forever peace. Go to BlueNile.com today. With the ever-increasing numbers of makes and models, it's now impossible for your local chain auto parts store to stock all the parts you need. Why endure often pointless or seemingly intimidating questioning and wait while the person behind the counter orders the parts on their computer, choosing the only brand their warehouse happens to carry? You have computers with access to RockAuto.com at home and in your pocket, save time and money when using Rock Auto. Go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck right locked on in their How Did You Hear About Us box so they know we sent you amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need, rockauto.com. Emilio Pagan is cooked in the back end of this bullpen. I said last night I'd be okay. I don't even know anymore. I said last night I'd be okay with him pitching like the fifth or sixth inning of games, like eating up some middle innings for the Twins. I said that last night. He looks so bad. I, I don't even know if I'm okay with that anymore. And they're not going to DFA Emilio Pagan. They might. Like, I wouldn't be shocked if they did. I would be surprised. I wouldn't be shocked. I, I just think they they lack – not only did they lack like a true setup man and true bullpen arms behind you on Duran. This bullpen really lacks velocity behind you on Duran. And Emilio Pagan is one of the only guys who can hump it up there at 96, 97. And Griffin Jackson get it there, 95, 96. But they lack velocity. And it's it's a failure at the end of the day. It's a bad decision by Rocco Baldelli tonight. I, I haven't absolved him from that. I, I've ripped Rocco Baldelli. At the end of the day, this is a front office mistake. You traded your freaking closer the night before opening day for this guy. And Chris Paddock, who's out for the season, you got, uh, you know, unfortunate events, pictures that that followed unfortunate events on Twitter, and it's the picture of Chris Paddock and Emilio Pagan <laughs> joining the Twins. Like, 
that was a disaster, folks. And if they would have signed, and my buddy Adam, Adam, if you're listening, cheers, said to me, if they would have signed Kendall Graveman, how much different would things be? And Kendall Graveman's making like 24 million over three years with the with the White Sox. If they would sign Kendall Graveman, who's got like a 220 ERA for a bad White Sox team's right, team right now, I think you could add legitimately add like at least three or four wins for the Twins and take away three or four losses, and that's a huge swing. It's a big swing in a season when it's there. You know, relief is a small sample compared to starting pitching, compared to the at bats your offense gets, compared to everything else. It's a smaller sample, and that's part of the reason why the Twins don't feel they need to invest in it in free agency or in, you know via trade. But if it's really bad, it impacts you mightily over a full season. And if it's really good, it impacts you. And then you have, you know, if you have an average-ish bullpen over a full season, it might might cost you a game or two, you know, one way or another. But it's not going to make or break you if you have an average bullpen. And by the time the playoffs come, you want to get that above average and have above average arms. But you can get creative in the playoffs with what you do. Like Josh Winder, for example, could pitch two or three innings in relief in the playoffs as a starter. Um, so you can get creative, but if you have a very bad bullpen that can't get outs, that that can sink your season. If you have a very good bullpen that can elevate you, like the Yankees this year, like the Yankees are incredible, but their bullpen is so good that it elevates them to the next level. And then you got a lot of teams in the middle who have like okay bullpens, and it doesn't really impact them. The Twins need to get back to a point where they have like an okay bullpen with you on in there. Uh, they're also pushing on Duran. Like he threw over 30 pitches tonight. This dude threw 16 innings last year, you know, at triple a, if they lost you on Duran, it, I remember last year when the twins were in that rut early on. And I said to myself, you know, this is really bad. And it's, it's looking like this season is lost. And I said it on the podcast, but if they lose Byron Buxton, it's over. And they lost Byron Buxton and, and it was over. And that's how I feel about you on Duran. I'm not saying you on going to get hurt. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, like, imagine if Yuan Duran was taken away from this bullpen for any period of time. It's really scary to think about. And, you know, they could regress and come back and pitch better, and they probably will. And Emilio Pagan will get more opportunities, unfortunately, and he'll probably pitch better. And they'll do this again. But I would advise the Twins to not let this happen again. It shouldn't have happened tonight. It makes me sick that it happened tonight. It shouldn't have happened tonight. How many times do you need to see it? And it's, again, so unfortunate because Alex Kirloff had a terrific ball game. The Twins offense had a terrific ball game. They battled back. They didn't give up. They scored six runs, and they lost because this bullpen reeks. And this team has a $140 million payroll, and their highest paid reliever is in the Padres bullpen right now. That's Sometimes it just comes, comes down to money. He's in the Padres bullpen. His name's Taylor Rogers, and their highest paid reliever on the roster is a guy they don't trust at all in big time spots, and that's Tyler Duffy at just under four million dollars. Twins will face Shane Bieber with Chris Archer going on Thursday. I want to thank you for making Lockdown Twins your first listen every day. Now make your second listen Lockdown MLB Prospects. Host Lindsey Crosby is a prospect encyclopedia, and he's going deep on the MLB stars of tomorrow. It's free and available wherever you get your podcast. Thanks again for listening. Have a great day, and go Twins.